Hi there, thank you so much for joining me. I am with Maggie Jandro today and we are going to talk about why now is such a good time to reevaluate your risk tolerance. We're also going to talk about what risk tolerance is. <laughs> Maggie is a financial planner and she is going to share with us the two main questions she's getting these days and how she answers them. And one of the really great things that I'm so, so appreciative to Maggie is that she has a tool that she's willing to run you through um, on a complimentary basis that's going to help you understand your risk tolerance. So, okay, so everyone's at home during self-quarantine, Maggie, right? And for our clients at Freed Marcroft, what that means is that tensions in their relationships that already existed are essentially getting exacerbated and one of those tensions is around money and that's Absolutely. why I'm so appreciative of you being here because people are at home it's a bit of a pressure cooker when there are already issues going on in a relationship and they're watching the stock market bounce up and down and they're watching unemployment numbers that are you know being announced every day it sounds like there's some scary news on the other hand, we've got people, and, and these, are, these are clients of yours too, of course, who call and they're so excited about how there are stocks on sale and what's the best tip and what should they be doing and in, in investing now. And in some cases, those two people are married, right? The person yeah. who's super worried about the market is married to the person who's, who's seeing all this opportunity in the pricing of com companies now. So that is why you are here. Thank you so much to talk to us about risk tolerance and figuring out what our own is so that we can set ourselves up for a long-term plan instead of being really stressed out in short-term situations. Absolutely. So thank you for having me. Um, you said it perfectly. I think now we are, are having difficult conversations with our partners for several reasons. We're stuck inside with them on an extended period of, of time. And so that might be reason to start having money conversations that we haven't had in the past or haven't had time to have in the past. And then also we just went through a really uh, bad month in the market, right? March, we saw record lows in the market. And for many of us, either we weren't invested or we weren't invested as heavily in 2008 or 2008 felt feels so far away um, because the last 11 years have been such a great bull market, which of course means a market that's growing upwards. So I just had this situation. I had a couple um, that, that met with me for their review and they have very different risk tolerances. Now we're lucky that they already had visited that through our tool that we'll go through in a minute. Um, and so they have a joint account together, which was invested somewhere in the middle of their risk tolerances. And then they have their individual retirement accounts, which are invested in line with their individual risk tolerances. And so the conversation was actually very productive um, because they had already had those conversations. For others, I think the, the conversation can be um, uncomfortable when you don't understand you know, why you've taken on so much risk or haven't, right? Right. I mean, it's basically like the best time was yesterday and the second best time is today, right? <laughs> like if you've had these conversations and you're meeting just to get like reminded that everything's okay or to, or, or to, re, or to, to make sure that what you thought your risk tolerance is, is actually your risk tolerance. But if you didn't do that and things are, things are, uh, you know, misaligned, no problem. We just do it now. That's right. Yeah. Um, you know, typically when markets are very volatile, we, we try to stay, stay, uh, we try to say to stay the course. Um, but if you're at a point, a breaking point where you just could not 
stand emotionally to see your account drop another dollar, then maybe it is time to cut some of those losses and rebalance your portfolio to a place where you're going to be more comfortable with it. And that being said, you know, the month of April, we, we regained some of those losses, certainly not all of them, but we've regained some of them. And so there might be ways you could rebalance or reposition your portfolio. So now's as good of a time as, as ever to rebalance your, or to revisit your risk tolerance. Cool. All right. Maggie has the tool so we can watch it and take a hypothetical me through it. Yeah. So Megan, we, you're, we're going to take a hypothetical Megan. Um, we have you just for easy numbers investing $1 million. Um, and so we had taken this prior to the call and um, you can see that, that Megan took the quiz and she got a risk tolerance score of 41. This is on a scale of one to 100. So 50 is right in the middle. So what this tells me is that Megan is moderate to moderate conservative, right? And then hypothetically, we took Megan's $1 million portfolio, how it's currently invested. We put in all of the investments that she has. And then she had a, that portfolio has a risk score of 75, which would be very aggressive on a scale of one to 100. But we're out of alignment. It turns out that my risk tolerance is a 41, but my actual investments are at a 75. Exactly. So you're completely out of alignment, as you said. And then what we can do, and let's say, let's say that, you know, your partner, one, one spouse has a 41 and the other has a 75. Well, again, that tells, tells you that you're not in alignment and that's okay, but how are we going to manage your uh, portfolios respectively, right? And the tool is really neat because you can actually look at what does a 41 mean in real terms? What does a 75 mean in real terms? So if I add a comparison, you know, something close to that, that 41, we'll, we'll do a 33. It's a little bit below, but you know, and you can see that in a really great year, like 2013, a portfolio invested at a risk of 75, that's a million dollars would have about a $300,000 gain, okay. but something invested more conservatively would have had about a $125,000 gain. Wow. So, and I don't know you have a gain, but you see the discrepancy. Yeah, I'd be giving up like $170,000. That's right. But then if we look at what happened in 2008, which was you know a recession, not too different numbers wise um, than what we're seeing now, even though the reasons were drastically different, you can see that a million dollar portfolio at a 75 risk score would lose about $366,000 in 2008. Whereas if you were more conservatively invested, you would lose on a million dollar portfolio a 148,000. So this gives you an idea of how much loss might you sustain in a 2008 like scenario. And are you comfortable with that? You know, right. and then um, that point about the long term versus the short term, right? Because that's how much you would lose in 2008 or gain in 2003. You used 2003, I think. 13, right? 13. Yeah. Or gain in 2013. But it doesn't. But what what you would be focused on is so say i've just gotten divorced right and i know that um, my risk tolerance is low 40s but that my portfolio coming out of my divorce was invested um around a 74 right sure and i know i have 20 years till retirement right and i know that i i know i know i want this amount you would be investing to take me to retirement and beyond, yeah. you wouldn't be investing for the short term. Yeah. Absolutely. And so that's a good point. So I can actually toggle this tool, uh, which includes the year 2008. Like you said, it's the one year, it was a terrible year and put it all the way out to now, right? Um, which is, you know, 11 years, right? Um, and you can see that no matter how you are invested, if you had remained invested from 2008 to now, you would have had some sort of gain. Obviously, uh, 75, you'd have more gain because it was 11 great years. And if you were more conservatively invested, that's okay. You would still have a gain. And so the point is, is to understand, you were saying, what is risk tolerance? Well, it's really how much risk what's your risk appetite? You know, how much risk can you tolerate when you open your statement and see it go down in the short term, understanding you might be giving something up in the long term. Right. Because we have to make sure that your mental health in the short term is intact and that you're happy and fine. Right. Exactly. 
you know, if you're aggressively um, invested, we know that over the long haul, historically, that is going to, you know, result in higher yields. But, but surviving this is just not not okay for everyone. It's not the right fit. And so getting this custom tailored to you and also figuring out how that's playing a role in if you're crafting a post-divorce future, right? You Absolutely. can this up forever, however you want. And through this tool, Maggie can show you your options, right? What's what one looks like versus the other on the upside and the downside. Yeah, and, and money is a tool, right? It's a tool to let us live the way that we want to live, whether that's um, sending your kids to school, whether it's buying a home or a boat or a car, and whether it's retirement, retirement, right? Retiring the way that you see fit, whether that's staying play, in place or traveling. And so when we invest, we invest with those goals in mind because sometimes you can take on less risk and still meet those goals. And other times you can't. So that's very important to understand your risk tolerance, because if you don't want to take on a lot of risk and you can still meet your goals, then that's great. You don't have to. Right. You can, you can meet your goals in, in a palatable and an emotionally palatable way. Right? Exactly. Exactly. That's great. So reach out and we will get you in touch with Maggie or reach out to Maggie directly to run through this tool yourself. So you can figure out how we can craft the best plan for you. Um, married or living the life uh, post-divorce that you've you've chosen to live. We want to make sure you're set up financially, emotionally, and in every other possible way. Thank you so much. Thank you.